I'm Henry Gilliland, the Motion Specialist with es &E. Tuning servo motors can be nerve-wracking and often seems extremely complicated and difficult. However, I'm going to show you how simple tuning can be when you're using Rockwell Automation's integrated SIP motion over Ethernet IP. In the video Building a Trend for Servo Tuning, we built a trend in Rockwell's Studio 5000 Logix Designer that we can now use for properly tuning our axis. In this video, we're going to examine two different methods for tuning a SIP motion axis in Logix Designer. Let's take a look at our software and begin. Start by right-clicking on the axis in the controller organizer and select Properties. In the Axis Properties window, select Auto-Tune in the Categories menu. If the axis you're tuning is running, then you'll need to disable the axis before you'll be able to perform a tune. I'll use motion direct commands to execute a motion servo off. Now that the axis is disabled, let's take a brief look at the auto-tune window. There are three main tuning parameters that adjust how the axis is tuned. Application type, loop response, and load coupling. Load coupling has two options in the dropdown, compliant and rigid. Since most servo applications have compliant loads, I recommend selecting compliant in general. Loop response will determine how accurately your axis is tuned. The higher you set the loop response, the less position error you will see. A medium loop response is usually a good starting point. The application type you select should be based on the application you are using the servo for. There are five options. Custom, basic tracking, point to point, and constant speed. In this video, we'll, ex we'll examine the difference between point to point and tracking. Let's start with point to point. To perform a tune, you will also need to fill in the fields in the lower portion of this window. Usually picking values that are averages for the application is best. In this case, on average, we are traveling about 100 millimeters at 80 millimeters per second. Press the Start button to begin the tuning process. Click Yes to save edits. Tuning only takes a moment. You should expect some slight movements from the motor you're tuning. When tuning is complete, a prompt will pop up and tell you tuning was successful. Click OK. You can also note the tuning bump will show up on your trend. The tuned values do not take effect until you click Accept Tuned Values. But now, let's test out our tuning using motion direct commands. First, execute a motion servo on to enable the position control loop. Let's close the axis properties window so we can see what's happening. Now execute an axis move to examine the trend values. Since the axis is already at position of 145 millimeters, we'll use an absolute position move of 0 millimeters with a velocity of 80 millimeters per second. With point-to-point -point tuning, it's easy to see that the purple position error trend at the bottom deviates significantly while the axis is moving. However, once in position, the position error is very low. This type of tuning can be used in applications where the end-to-end -end positions of a move are very important, but the travel position is not critical. As mentioned earlier, you might see this type of tuning used on a pick-and-place or indexing application, where end positions are important. This tuning will cause less mechanical and electrical strain on your system and therefore extend the life of your components. However, some applications require precision throughout the entire move. For these applications, you can select Tracking for the application type in your auto-tune parameters. Let's reopen the tuning window and give it a try. As before, we'll need to disable the axis before running an auto-tune. Execute an MSF, then change the application type from point-to-point -to, -point to tracking. 
Then perform the auto-tune again. After the tune completes, make sure you press the Accept Tuned Values button. Then close the auto-tune window to test the axis. Execute an MSO. Then run the same MAM as before, absolute at 80 millimeters per second to zero millimeters. Note the drastic difference in position error during the move. It is now more controlled with a maximum deviation of around 0.09 millimeters. This type of tuning should be used in applications where the following error needs to be minimized at all times. Tracking tuning should be used on applications that require position coordination between multiple axes or subsystems. While this following error is smaller, it can be even better. If we open the tuning window again, we can adjust our loop response time, again disabling the axis, then changing the loop response from medium to high. Perform the tune one more time. Now, when we execute the same move as before, we'll see that the following error again drastically decreases. Enable with MSO, then execute the MAM. Now, we only have a maximum following error of around 0.03 millimeters. Now that you have a basic understanding of how to use Auto-Tune to maximize the performance of your servo system, the next video will dig into the use and purpose of the manual tuning feature in Logix Designer for SIP Motion systems. Thanks for watching and please be sure to subscribe to ESNE TV for updates on all the products and services that we have to offer.